This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. You brought up uh, the offensive coordinator out in Tampa, guy that we both like, um, and Byron Leftwich. He was up for the Jaguars head coaching job. Looked like he had the head coaching job in the bag. Then he tried to flex a power move on him. Now it's looking like they, they, they're they're doing interviews with other head coaching opportunities. Eric, we've spoke about the Rooney Rule plenty of times. We spoke, we've spoken about the lack of minority coaches, GMs, executives in the NFL. We also spoke uh, with Will about how we were both okay with Byron Left, which is flexing that power and saying, if you want me, I'm going to bring Adrian Wilson with me to, to GM this thing. Okay, where, where does... Brian Leftwich, you go from here. Is it completely over with the Jaguars? Do you think? What, what, what are we doing here with this situation? I don't think it's completely over. I think both teams are trying, both sides, I should say, are, are kind of flexing their power. Uh, the Jaguars don't want to look too desperate and have to give it to everything Byron wants and vice versa. Byron, I think, is doing the right thing as, as we highlighted on the live on Friday. You know, you want me uh, to use your phrase, I'm the catch. You know what I'm saying? So, do what everything you do everything in your power to make sure I'm happy. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they do work it out. In terms of the Rooney Rule, though, and and I feel like I, I we've mentioned this before, the Rooney Rule really isn't going to be truly effective until we see more minorities as presidents and GMs, not necessarily owners. It, it, obviously, we want more black ownership, right? We want that, but majority of these teams leave the hiring up to the president and the GM. And just like any other business, this is a business of relationships. When you have enough relationships, you're going to get calls. You're going to get interviews. You look at Brian Dayball getting the job with the Giants, right? It's no coincidence that the new Giant GM was the assistant GM in Buffalo and worked hand in hand with Brian Dayball. So when it was time to interview, it was like, oh, let me call my man Brian up. He'll fit the, he'll fit the gig, right? So that's where we need more minorities. And, and that's where I would like to see the numbers start to trend upward. Uh, kudos to the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. They both hired uh, black GMs uh, for the first time, I believe, in their franchise history. I know for the Bears is the first time in their franchise history. I think Minnesota as well. So that's where we need to see it more. And then, therefore, I think from there it'll trickle down and you'll start to see more black head coaches coordinators and and guys put in position of power but for, for right everything else will fall into place um but to get back on byron Leftwich, i think he's still the perfect man for the job if i'm the jaguars don't overthink this don't try to get too cute if if you're the ownership group there you realize you have you know some good pieces but obviously the jewel of all that is your quarterback trevor lawrence and who better to guide your young quarterback than an offensive coordinator who has a Super Bowl ring, an offensive coordinator who worked with Tom Brady, an offensive coordinator who also had Jameis Winston lead the league in passing and touchdowns as well. Mm. So, and who played the game, so he's going to understand it on a, on a on a greater level. Uh, Will highlighted a story on the live of Byron Leftwich being a true players coach, where the guys all loved him and rallied around him. So, if you're the Jaguars, don't overthink this thing. Bring him in. Make it work. If it's about money, you can figure that out on the back end of the deal. But on, in the short term, let's get you in the building. Let's get going and let's move forward. Okay. Now, yeah. Listen, I I agree. I hope they do get the job done. Um, I hope they I hope they you know them listening to us on the live last week don't affect them because they might have heard about that story and be like, now nah, we don't need you out here trying to get bonuses. <laughs> everybody on the squad. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa! You trying to get everybody some money? You trying to get everybody some money in here? Hopefully, they skipped over that part of the uh, of the of, of the live, and uh, they, they'll still bring bring Byron Leftwich in. It's his time. Um, we've had this season. There have been nine uh, coaching vacancies this season. Four of them are already filled. None of them are minority uh, candidates. 
We got five left. We got the Saints left. We got the Jaguars, the Vikings, the Dolphins, and the Texans. We're going to see. I'm going to hold it. I ain't, I ain't going to rush the judgment until we see. Now, it was looking like we would have had one with Leverage going to the Jags, but now I'm not 100% sure on that one. And I do get the power flex where, you know what? Yeah, we don't, like you said, we don't want to look desperate. We're going to have a couple of more guys come in. But honestly, who are you going to have come in right now that has a better resume, a better coaching resume than Byron Leftwich? Obviously, only, only yeah, got, got, he hasn't been a head coach yet, but majority of the guys you're going to bring in for interviews haven't been head coaches yet as well. No, that's a fact. The only guy whose resume is stronger, and this is because he was an assistant for a much longer period than uh, Byron Leftwich, would be Brian Flores, who was also has a couple. Party, so, <laughs> yes, also also minority head coach, but uh, Brian Flores, who was an, a longtime assistant and worked his way up through the Patriot organization, I believe he has three Super Bowl rings as an assistant. Yeah. So he's the only one whose resume would be more decorated than Byron Leftwich, but. To left which credit, you know, he had a very solid pro career as well. So you exactly. add in his pro career with now his work as an assistant, and he's tailor made to lead your franchise. I, in my personal opinion, anyway. And playing his pro career was 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 him playing the same position as your newest franchise quarterback that you just drafted a year ago for the same franchise too. Ex- yeah. Exactly. So it ju- it just makes perfect sense. Um, again, I'm not, you know, and I would, I wanted to go in this week, but I'm not going to rush the judgment because there are five vacancies left over. Um, I would say out of those five jobs left, I'll probably say the saints gig is probably the, the best one of those because, you know, they still have a pretty, pretty strong team, a team that can get right back to the playoffs. Um, Jameis actually was looking all right before he got hurt last season. He'll be back. Um, Oh, they still, I'm sure they'll resign him again uh, this season. Michael Thomas, you know, missed the year with an injury. He'll be back this coming season. I don't know if he if he winds up staying in in New Orleans, but who knows? Now we're talking about a situation um, where Sean Payton has stepped away from the team. A lot of the issues that Michael Thomas was having was with Sean Payton and the back and forth that they were having. So who knows? Maybe. Now that he's not there, maybe Michael Thomas says, you know what? I like being in New Orleans. You know what I mean? I don't have to deal with, with, with this particular coach. Let me see what's up. You know what I mean? So I'd probably say that's the best situation. Um, you know what I mean? But Vikings are borderline playoff team. The Dolphins are a borderline playoff team. So who knows? But again, I'm not going to rush the judgment. I'm going to let the rest of these coaching hires fill out. Um, I know the Jaguars were actually – they wanted to look at the Rams' offensive coordinator, um, but they want, they would have been trying to interview him uh, today. But the Rams, you know, they, they took care of business and they won. So that's actually going to have to wait. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I just – man, we somebody somebody got to got to bring somebody up in there that got a little melanin. Yeah, I mean, and the, the tough part is the good – assistant coaches and coordinators they play deep into the playoffs and and that's kind of worked against the enemy as well too because yep. there's a lot of times you really can't take interviews until the season's over or a lot of times your team won't even grant the permission to get interviews done um until the season's over so like you said now we get to see um obviously you know a couple minority head coaches or, or coaching candidates eric the obviously byron leftwich todd bowles oh, leslie frazier uh, obviously, Brian Flores, uh, Raheem Morris, who's the defense coordinator for the Rams, who I think is going to get some consideration, um, especially since he was the interim head coach last year with the Falcons. So he has a little bit of experience as well. Um, so there are a lot of quality candidates out there, man. And like you said, give them their fair, fair shake. Give them a fair chance. Bring them in. See what they're about. If they fit what you're trying to build, hire them. And don't, don't hesitate to hire somebody just because, you know, they're a little darker than you might want your head coach to be. I, I just, to me, it's silly, but we also understand the world that some of these owners operate in. This is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Friends, Real Talk. Get real with it, my son.
is real talk, we as real as you thought, real fans.